last time. All right. Let's see who remembers this very quickly. I will just quiz you for white. First move here. All right. <clears throat> so we random. You're the fastest one. Yugoslavian Berserker, second place. GM, skilled saber, chess art. You are the winner so far. Gordon, you also found it. Aha, this was Vachier's game, right? MVL's game. Uh, 206, congratulations. Sartak, you got it as well. Uh, some people wanted to play C5. Okay, should I mute everyone? How can I do that, by the way? Is somebody talking here? I don't know if it's intended uh, for me or someone else. I think it's not for me. I forgot the topic. I forgot it too. All right, guys. I hope you remember other things better. I will write it to you here. This is what we call taking our chances. Exactly, so random. Taking our chances. My mind is a little full. Wow, really? Uh, wait some 30 years and you will see. It will be even fuller. So, so random. Please go ahead. You were the fastest one. What did uh, Vacher play at this moment? This is a very important uh, move. Uh, it helped him to win this game. I'm looking. Yeah, here we are. Right. Mm -hmm. so, let's see. Uh, all right. Rook p5. Exactly. What's the plan? Well, in the game. What did I play in the game? By the way, not that I really remember this. I also have problems with. Remembering Santos played it in the game Bishop D6. And here Vacher played the key move in this endgame in order to create a future. Yeah, exactly, Sarthak. Aha. Uh -huh. That's right. H5. This is a good move in the long run. It's fixing pawns, but also it's creating some kind of situation where Black's King might be exposed to some mating idea. And uh, believe it or not, that happened later on in this game. This is how the game continued. Uh, this is what we looked at last time. It's a long story, of course. White is certainly not winning, but it's more pleasant to play black here. This is what, uh, white here. This is what happened last time, I think. Knight takes e4, rook b3. Material is limited, but even so, uh, MVL was able to win this game. c5, knight e5, trying to keep the pawn at bay, and then rook e8, very important move. And after that, he started to. Uh, uh, how do you say it? We have a mating net? Would you say that? Probably, right? He brought up the king and so on. And later on, he was able to uh, progress on his uh, king side. So, yeah, that's what happened last time. I wanted to continue a little with this topic today. So, second installment of taking our chances. Endgame topic. Many endgames are drawn, objectively speaking. Nowadays, we're very used to uh turning on stockfish and stockfish will say the famous zero 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 which will just say slight advantage plus zero dot two and everybody says hey this end game is a draw because stockfish says it's equal well maybe if you're sitting there with stockfish next to you but if you're playing the game that's not the same thing there is big space for um bringing your opponent into difficulties give them opportunity to to go wrong and so on yeah, chat is quiet. Today, everybody's well behaved. I like that. That means that we will have more concentration on the chess part, right? So we don't uh, talk about uh, irrelevant things and so on. Let me show you my next example. Let's have a look at a few uh, rook endgames that uh, belong to this group of endgames, which are theoretically drawn, objectively drawn. However, in practice, it's easy to go wrong as we all know in the end game we have little time on the clock so uh, there is a greater room for mistakes and so on so this is a great uh, game from a grandmaster game two italian uh, grandmasters uh, dvirni with white and uh, basso playing with the black pieces um, all right first question for you guys how do you think white can try to win this game i won't say that they win it no i'm just saying which is the best attempt attempt at winning this game. I will quiz you for the next uh, three moves, all right? You get for that one minute uh, 20, all right? Somebody complained last time about too little time. So, yeah, that's it. You get not so much time, but I think you can try to figure this out. White won this game. Yeah, I should tell you that. White managed to win this game. Um, 
strong grandmaster Basso was not able to uh, cope with this task over the board. I can understand that he was on the time time uh, pressure and so on. Congratulations to Kind King Sam and Hank. You're the first winners here. Uh, interesting idea by Mexico Real chess art, tactical magician and GM. I think I looked at that also. Yeah, I won't trade rooks, uh, guys. Bad news for you. That's a good attempt, of course. It's in the spirit of this uh, topic, no? Make them go wrong and so on. But uh, yeah, I want to run into that trap. Somebody open microphone. Uh, Patriots. Okay, nice to see you, Patriots, but I will mute you. Don't take it as a personal offense or anything. Let's just try to be quiet here. All right. Sarthak is also opening the microphone. All right, Sarthak. Yeah. Uh, feel free to chat in the, to, to write in the chat also, but as long as it's related to this topic, right? So what you're looking at. Okay. What else here? Let's see. Added chess, Kugel, Princess Megan, Gordon, in, improve the king. Yeah, that's a neutral move. Yeah. King d3 also possible. What if rook g1? Yeah, we will look at that. All right. So I got many moves here. I think it will be difficult to look at all of them. One of them I would certainly like to comment on. Uh, some people propose this move, but that simply can't be right. Uh, what would black play here? Maybe I should actu actually show you that. Should I do that? Maybe, yeah. Just for general education. No, there is a very nice game by Smyslov, where he made a draw in such an endgame. I have it in my book, and I know that other people also put it in their books. Hold on, guys. Let me see if I can bring it up very quickly so that you can make the, the connection with this game. Lipnitsky Smyslov. Exactly. Lipnitsky Smyslov, this game was played about uh, 72 years ago. That was a long time ago. 1952. Let me come back to these winners here, by the way, Kind King Sam and Hank. Please remind me once we get back to this, but I feel exactly Kind King Sam. Yeah, I'll come back to you, Chessart. I understood your question. Don't worry. I just wanted to show you. This is very important. This is a classical endgame. This is for your general chess education. I'll quiz you on this one also so that everybody can show me. This is an even nicer example, I must say, than the one that we are looking at. But since it's already uh, well known, uh, I won't uh, look over this one. You can find it in, in different chess books and so on. This is a very, very nice endgame. You're close, GM, Sui, Kind King. Congratulations to Connor and Awesome Owen and Sarthak Chess Art. That's exactly how you should play. That's called activity in the endgame. Vasily Smyslov, one of the best endgames, if not the very best endgame player ever. I don't know if you can make a list like that. Uh, best endgame players ever. I guess there are some candidates, right? We could talk about maybe Capablanca, uh, Kochnoi, Smyslov. Yeah, sorry, there are more names, of course. But uh, you can start with these uh, players. Uh, so, for sure, Smyslov is very high in that list. Uh, I can recommend his book also about uh, Smyslov. I'll write here, now that the chat is quiet, uh, Smyslov has a great endgame book. Uh, endgame book... Magnus, yeah, of course, sorry, I forgot, yeah. Great endgame book about his own games. Yeah, yeah, Carson, for sure, he's also on the list, definitely. But uh, credits to Smyslo because he wrote a book about his uh, endgames, which I think Carson hasn't done yet. But okay, there is still plenty of time for that, of course. Yeah, Carson has fantastic endgames, so good point. All right, Connor, you're the fastest one here walking in. Should I tell everyone's names here? Connor, Awesome Owen, Sarthak, Chessort, Tactical Magician, Alg, Skilled Saber, Tori Chess, and Patriots. You are the nine winners. I could give half a point to GM, so random kind team Sam 206. Metsa Mortis. Princess Megan could also have half a point. But you know what, uh, Princess Megan, that square, it's not for the pawn. That square is for somebody else. All right. Sorry, back to Connor. Connor, you were the fastest one. Let's see if I can find you here. All right. Let's see. Uh, here we are. Right. Yeah, Rook C1. This is important because we would like to put our Rook in the back of the pawn, right? That's extremely important. So once we have the rook there, we are uh, like, uh, yeah, he becomes a slave now, right? The white rook becomes a slave, rook d4 to protect, protect his spot, and this is the key move. If you didn't play that, don't worry, you will play it next time. But it's extremely important. If you don't play that move, 
you give me chances of perhaps at some point bringing over my king somehow, or maybe this way. Uh, so this is a very smart move. What Smyslov later did, he brought up his king this way, and he invaded in that way, and he got counterplay on the other side. Um, right? Slave. Yeah, exactly. He can King Islam. Uh, slave. I was looking for the verb. Uh, yeah, no, he didn't win. No, he made a draw. Uh, enslave. Enslave, I think you can say in English, right? Is that right? I will Google this. Uh, let's see if I can get this right. My English is okay, but it's not far from perfect. Uh, let me see. Yeah, enslave, you say. So what you're doing here, you're enslaving the... Exactly. Enslaving White's Rook. That's what we're doing here. I, I hope this sounds okay in English. Tying up White's Rook, maybe you would say. Also, I can play Rook D8, of course, but this is not a good angle for the Rook. Here, actually, the same nice plan of bringing in the King would be interesting. Uh, yeah. Uh, who is the goat of chess? Oh, you're asking how did you do those uh, icons? Yeah, nice. Uh, sounds like you're a computer genius, we can see here in the chat. Okay. Still a draw. Yeah, this is going to be a draw. It's not that White is losing or anything. I can always put my Rook here if I like and control these pawns. But uh, we're talking about black saving this endgame. So Connor is completely right. The rook should go behind the pawn. And then it's very nice to put the rook here so that we can uh, cut off white's king along the third rank. Yeah, fantastic endgame by Smyslov. He had many of these, both winning and drawing. So that will be the book recommendation of today. Sorry if uh, I already made this recommendation in the past. That's highly possible. But anyway, once you can see this pattern of bringing the rook behind the, the past pawn, uh, no matter if it's our pawn or it's the opponent's pawn. Now it's easy to see here what we should do here after the move A4, right? So we're back into the Italian Grandmaster duel here. If A4, of course, you're completely right, we will play Rook A1. And at this point, there isn't even a chance to, to defend it like in Smyslov's game, right? So I hope uh, this is clear. A4, it's well intended, of course, to run with the past pawn. That's why it's a chance for winning this game, but it's badly executed. All right, let's talk about the other move. Some people are saying rook e1. I like the idea of this move, of course. In this way, we're trying to trade off the rooks, which would be disastrous for black because pawn end game, yeah, we have this pawn as a outside past pawn, right? And we can bring in our king and so on. So that's, of course, wrong for black to trade off the rook. So black's best move. What should, yeah, Khan King Sam, your winner together with Hank. Yeah, exactly. So, what should Black play here? Rook H2, Khan King Sam, that's completely right. And if Rook E2, anyone, what should, silly question, no? What should Black play here, probably? We're back on business now. Yeah, offer a draw. <laughs> but don't offer a draw because it's White who should offer a draw here, right? We are defending, so they should offer a draw if they want it. Anyway, Rook G1 was proposed. So, anyone, what do you think? How should Black uh, react at this point? We talk about, aha, so please notice, we're saying that trading rooks is good for white, right? Uh, peace trades almost uh, always, or usually, uh, usually favors favor the side with a material advantage, right? If you're a pawn up, you love to trade off the pieces and so on, right? On the other hand, when we talk about pawn trades, that's a different story. That's the opposite. So we usually say that pawn trades, let's see if I can do some copy and paste here. Let's see. Uh, pawn trades usually favor the side with the material disadvantage, right? So if you're material down, you're very happy to trade off as many pawns as you like. So h3, that's what black is going for here. No matter what white plays, I guess, I don't know, king here, for example, I'll play h3. And I guess this is the tastier, tastier pawn, right? And black should be able to make a draw here. After all, there are two weaknesses and so on. Uh, I agree. What, what are we talking about? Uh, should I follow the, the chat conversation here? Is it rook e3? Uh, rook and knight versus rook is draw, but if you add some pawns, it's my... Exactly. Good, good point. Good point. Should we show this with an example? Or everybody understands? If you have a rook and a knight for one side, or you can just say a knight. A single knight will never win, right? But if you have a knight and a pawn against a pawn, you can bet that you will win in most cases. So, yeah. That's about pawns, no? Important for the attacking side that there are pawns on the board. All right, back to back to business here. Kind King Sam wanted to uh, show the solution here, so please go ahead 
uh, some uh, where is some here all right let's see white species so which is the best try here king c3 exactly that's what happened in the game this is basically a pawn sacrifice because now black can of course play rook f1 and can king sam didn't have a, any thought about playing g3 here the point is rather than after rook takes f4 white is ready to defend the pawn in the best possible way right that's right, uh, Sam, exactly. So that's, so far, we are in the game, right? Rook a2, at this point, we are helping the pawn to advance. It is still a draw, but we are taking our chances, right? Now, time to look at the opposite uh, side of the coin. You are now playing with the black pieces, and I would like to know how should black uh, continue here in order to, to save a draw, because now, they are against the wall. They have to be really uh, precise at this point in order to make to make a draw here. All right, I'll just. I think this is easy, so I'll, I'll give you just forty five seconds. Okay. All right. We have some people who played the move in the game. I think is that okay, Charles? Congratulations, you're the fastest one. Um, GM, I'm very sorry. You have played the move in the game. You're copying the grandmaster's move, but. In this case, that's not good news. Okay. Goats, you're the second winner here. Congratulations. All right. And Torices, you're the third winner here. Yeah, great work. Actually, this uh, solution is connected to what I just said. No, pawn trades helps the side which is defending usually in this endgame. So, uh, Charles, please go ahead. Show us how should black continue in this case. H4, that's right. White doesn't have much else to do than advancing the pawn. That's right, H3. Very nice. Uh, this is what can happen here. You have at least two moves which will make a draw. That's, I was going to say, that's the computer move. But uh, you're excused. Yeah, it's okay. If, if you find this move more natural, for me, it's more natural to play like that. But yeah, never mind, never mind. Yours is also fine. So what Charles has noticed, of course, is that if I go to defend this pawn, I will lose the other one. Exactly. So I will have to play something like this. And I think this is not so difficult to understand. It's uh, about what we talked about in the past. Yeah, I'll just go anywhere here, like King D4, for example. So what's going to happen here, Charles? Yeah, Charles is showing us the whole point here. Aha. Thanks to a lesser number of pawns on the board, you can see for yourself. Add if maybe one pawn on b3 and one pawn on c7, and black is dead lost. But here it's a rather trivial draw because we just have to uh, rely on our f pawn. We don't even need the other pawn, of course. Yeah, when you do this, by the way, careful with this trick. No, careful with this trick. If white gets rook a5 in, I don't think against two pawns it's probably not making a difference. But if it's one pawn, this way of cutting the king, it will decide the game. No? So don't uh, allow me to do that, right, uh, Charles? Poor Charles, I'm having him playing all the moves here. Yeah, exactly. So I think we, we understand this, right? We can, of course, continue, but I think most people, yeah, we, we got it right. I can take like this if I like so that I can get the king in the back, the rook in the back, sorry. But it's not going to make much difference here. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, king is kind of far. Exactly. Can king Sam. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just doing the best I can to confuse. Uh, Charles here. I'm trying to take my chances, but uh, yeah, my chances are slim. I know my chances are slim here, but just to see how it, how it finishes, right? Yeah. Don't worry, Charles. Everything will be all right. Had you gone the other way? I think it's, it's like in the famous uh, game. Anyone remember that game? Alekhain Bogolubov, maybe. King e4 is, is better, no? So that you don't let me bring in my king. Uh, does that make sense? I think we understand this, right? Shoulder, shoulder. Sorry, Khan King Sam. Exactly. You should shoulder. You got a shoulder check, white king. Uh, yeah. Titan Chess uh, helped us with that explanation. Yeah, exactly. So in this way, it's going to be an easy draw. Yeah, no matter what I play here. Uh, yeah, what would you like me to play? I don't know. Take and king gets closer. And yeah, it's going to be a draw. So that's the way to draw this endgame. But if the Grandmaster didn't do this, you can imagine that it's not that simple. Uh, right? Basso, strong player. I think he was uh, above 2600 at some point. Uh, strong player. Made a mistake here. That cost him the game. 
he played in the game. Yeah, thanks, uh, Charles. Great work. He made a... It's not hockey. <laughs> yeah, sometimes maybe it's like hockey, just like shouldering. So he made a huge mistake here. He played the game. I mean, he played the move Rook G4. I suspect that if you played Rook E4, it's basically the same story. What happened now was that one pawn is left uh, on the king side, right? White keeps one pawn. So white, uh, yeah, anyone, any volunteer, how should white play? Uh, so that you can make the moves. Alg, okay, Alg, you're the volunteer. Uh, you can have the, the move here, the pawn. Please go ahead. A5, that's what happened in the game. King E5, active king. Yeah, not difficult. The further, the better. What did I miss? I don't know, Sarthak. I don't know. You missed that you didn't trade off the pawns, perhaps. And at this point, what White simply did here, uh, I, I think there are maybe different ways to, to make it, to, to win this, sorry. But he found the simplest one. Yeah, he just brought home the king. That, that was very simple, yet very nice, I think. Because actually White is down the pawn here, right? White is, has two pawns only. Black has three. But it doesn't really matter because Black can never trade off this pawn, right? If I try something like this to play f3, what would happen, anyone? I tried uh, Elephant, Chess Genius, Sarfax, Sui Random and so on. Of course, Rook uh, here, that's a smart uh, move because uh, I should certainly not go this way if I don't want to get mated. And if I go back, well, slowly white will um, Tsukswang black, right? They will end up in Tsukswang. So that happened in the game. That happened in the game. He played h4 here. Rook a4, king g3, king f1. Very nice technique by Dvirny. This is not difficult. f4. Anyone? Black will be in Tsukswang since Titan chess. That's completely right. That's right, skilled saber. Rook a3, of course. Uh, yeah, you can guess the rest here. King g1, interesting. Yeah, just to, you know, enjoy this position while you have it on the board. Yeah, he played like this. Rook a5, you can see that soon, sooner or later, Black's uh, mo waiting moves are over. Uh, if I go h3, anyone, what would happen? That's right, g8, and it's almost a, like comical, comical situation here because Black is almost mated, right? This is not what Black wants, and yeah, we can just walk over. Yeah, so I think we understood this, right? The game, we can play through very quickly what happened here. He lost his his moves and white finally prevailed. Yeah, this is the best chance for black, right? Black is also taking those chances, uh, hoping for some, maybe some uh, stalemate combination, no? but it's it's not going to happen. So he's just resigned here. Yeah, it's very hard to, to fabricate that, that stalemate. It's, it's going to be impossible. Uh, so he just resigned here. King here and you can just continue. With. Yeah, I don't know. Many, a million ways that you can win this probably. Uh, some ways to draw it also if you're very unfortunate, but yeah, it's not going to happen here. It's a little more tricky when you have the, the H and the F pawn, right? I remember seeing some game like that. They had the pawn on C6 and suddenly it was a draw because there were uh, stalemates all over the place. Uh, we, if you have, if you imagine the, the G4 pawn on C6, but because then that this square is touched, but not with these two pawns, of course. So, yeah. I hope uh, Black doesn't have checking distance. Yeah, but I mean, even if you had checking distance, I could always like sneak back and then put my rook on the fifth rank. And yeah, I have like extra, since Black King is not playing, I have like extra rook if you compare to rook and pawn versus rook. I, I see what you mean, uh, Titan Chess. But uh, here, yeah, checking distance. The pawn can be on G2, and I think White is winning easily anyway because of this situation on the queen side. Anyway, so that's what happened here. Very quickly, what did Dvirny play here? Should I... We, I, I had so low success rate here, so I think I should actually repeat this. Yeah, we will repeat this because uh, very few people got it. So you get only 15 seconds for this, all right? 10 seconds. No, 15 now. Okay. Yeah, requis. So that you apply what you have learned. That's right. Good work by uh, Sarthak, Goats, Gordon, Chessar, Titan Chess, Random Yugoslavian Berserker, Elephant Chess, Genius. Uh, that's eight, right? So we had eight winners here. Uh, GM, you didn't learn your lesson. I'm sorry. Uh, as a punishment, you will have to play out the moves here, GM. Please go ahead. Uh, you will correct yourself for move three, all right?
Aha, king c3, black played rook f1. And this is the best way to learn. Yeah, the computer didn't like, exactly, bravo. The computer didn't like the move a5. This is, of course, what we want to play. But first, we should make sure that we have the rook behind the passed pawn. You see, this good old plan with rook behind the passed pawn, it doesn't change over time, no? The theory of the Grunfeld or the Neidorf, it changed over time. But the rook behind the passed pawn, that's forever. You can, I mean, unless they change the, the rules in chess, uh, this is going to be forever. Yeah, very important. You're right, Sarsak. This is just immortal stuff that you need to know. No matter if you like to attack or defend or play the King's Indian or play the Karo Khan, that doesn't matter. You have to know what these endgame principles. All right, let's uh, bring up our next example. Yeah, this is a more tricky example. I will warn you. It's For me, it's also tricky, the next one. And it was certainly tricky for White in this game because they ended up losing. So beware of that. End games, especially rook end games, are very tricky. Let's see if we can understand this together. Um, same old story. We are playing here with the black pieces. Uh, these pawns go that way. You would think that white is close to a draw. And of course, if you ask Stockfish, Stockfish will say that this is a draw. However, it's not so easy in practice, right? The nasty end game for white, you could say. Uh, because black's uh, king will get closer to the pawn and white's king is cut off right now. So, uh, yeah, white is Rahul, I think, from India, and black is Batshulun from Mongolia. Sorry if, if I'm pronouncing it wrong, but these are the players, uh, strong players, uh, 2400, so more or less. So let's see if you can walk in the footsteps of the Mongolian uh international master i think it is in this case so uh, try to find the smartest way to continue here i will warn you that the second move is the important one all right the second move is the important one let's see if you can get this right i'll give you just one minute for this all right oh mongolian grandmaster thanks a titan i didn't know that you're you're right yeah he's almost 2500 so that's that's fairly likely yeah grandmaster all right, uh, that's okay also. Sartak, Skilled Saber, Alg, Titan Chess. Uh, it can transpose to the game if you play like that. So it's okay. It's okay to play like that. In that case, I play Rook B8, right? And you can think about what you will play against Rook B8. Uh, that goes for uh, Sartak, Skilled Saber, Alg, Titan Chess, Mecha Mortis, and GM. I will play Rook B8 on move two, B8. Uh, you can then think about what is your answer here. Rook e4. Do I really understand that move? If you play rook e4, I think you get let my king get closer, no? King d7. Interesting move. Giving away the pawn like that. Kugel chess in Yugoslavia. Circle. Interesting. Yeah, maybe. Okay, Pikachu. Only winner. And goats in the last second. All right. Please go ahead, uh, Pikachu. Let us know how to continue here. Yeah, it's almost the same thing, Titan Chess, but uh, I think what he played in the game is, is smarter. Yeah, e4, the passed pawn should advance, as they say. White, of course, played rook e6, since they know that if the king got aha, so we just give away the, uh, the pawn, right? We just give away the pawn. Perhaps what White was expecting was that Black would play king, uh, sorry, Pikachu. They were expecting this, but then... Black and white can give check, and then white can just wait, right? But no, the grandmaster said, no, I am going to give away that pawn. So I think we need the pawn to not to be blocked. Yeah, something like that. So at this point, white to play and lose, you could say. White to play and lose. In the game, white played the very human move. There are cases where sometimes, I'll write in the chat, sometimes uh, passive defense is better than is uh, more to the point more to the point than active defense all right nine cases of ten i would say nine uh, out of ten uh, nine out of ten uh, go for uh, active defense but uh, but there is a tenth case right if you see what i mean so uh, rook takes b6, that's what white played in the game. This was a very bad idea. Please go ahead, Pikachu. How do you take home this game? Not so difficult. 
Exactly. Now, uh, none of white species are really able to uh, fight against the pawn. They played in the game rook b8. Some exceptions, exactly. Some exceptions. Yeah, this is not difficult for you, Pikachu. Uh, this is piece of cake. Don't forget that if you let my rook uh, come back, maybe I can then save myself in the same way as, as last time, right? So simply don't let me trade off the... Uh, the rook for the pawn, so to speak. And there are also some cases where there is no defense. I don't see any moves by Pikachu. What happened? Should I ask somebody else? Uh, 206. All right, 206. I can't pronounce your whole handle, but uh, you can take the black pieces. All right, 206. Um, is it black to play, by the way? What happened here? Oh, King E4 was played. Yeah, if you play King E4, I wonder if that also makes a draw. Also wins, sorry. Do I have maybe king? No, I cannot play king c3. Interesting. That should also work, right? I think so. It's what we just talked about. Yeah, that's a good move because now you can put your king here and since it's tied off, tied, uh, tied, yeah, like something like that. No. Oh, but then it's... Sorry, I'm getting a little confused too. <laughs> uh, I think black is winning, right? Black is winning. Yeah, we, we get the pawn. Uh, didn't e2 just win? Yeah, so that's what he played in the game. But uh, our friend Pikachu said king e4, so I was struggling to understand if that was exactly who is playing here. 206, exactly. So that's how the grandmaster played in the game. That seems a little simpler, no? To play like that. And now it's just completely, completely over, no? Now it's completely over. Uh, so yeah, what happened in the game? Uh, he played, uh, let's see here, what did he play in the game? Um, what happened in the game? Rook b8, e2, rook. He gave check on d8 first. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah, that it was a draw with rook with a7. Alec, really? Yeah. So this is what we talked about uh, before, right? Now the king is cut off, so there is no chance you can uh, save yourself here because the king cannot assist the pawn, right? Resignation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, oh, rookie four also wins. Oh, maybe, or maybe that's what he played in the game. Yeah, no, actually, white took on d2 in, in the game. So, yeah, sorry, I'm not keeping track of the game. Yeah, here, white resigned. Um, wait, yeah, rookie four was, was fine. So, basically, what black did here, they uh, bet on the, on the past pawn, rookie six, king d5, but it was still a draw, all right? So, mm. If this is still a draw, what should be White's uh, correct way of playing? But it's a little tricky still. It's a little tricky. There is one difficult move here that you have to find. Let's see. All right, that's it. You get one minute for this. All right. Yeah, if you play like that, I'm sorry, Gordon, skill saber, so random. In that case, I will just continue to run with the pawn. Uh, so nobody got the whole sequence here. Oh, it, this is so you see, it's not easy. No, it's not easy for anyone. Uh, certainly not easy if you're sitting there uh, at the board. Yeah, this is very tricky for sure. The second move is very, very tricky. Uh, easy win, king cut off here. Uh huh. So, nobody got it so far. Incredible. We can, of course, request, but we can also talk a little. Yeah. No, it was not, uh, Sam. It was not. So, let's see here. Everybody understood that we should opt for passive defense, so to speak. We should keep the rook on this side. So, Black's only chance to progress here would be to give check and then push the pawn. So, at this point, active defense predicts that we should play king before but i told you there are some exceptions if you play like this i can just continue to run and unfortunately if you attack my pawn i can defend it with a rook now it's safely defended you don't have time for this transaction i mean it won't work anyway and now i can just uh continue to use my my king to support the pawn right um you want to request but th th the problem is that if we request right now some of you will just perhaps 
commit the same mistakes that others did. So that's why I wanted to talk a little about it. So King D4, uh, unfortunately, this gives Black a chance to just continue with that plan. And we can't really get at this pawn. It's very unfortunate for White. So natural move, intuitive move, but sometimes intuition is wrong in the end game. Okay. Other people wanted to play King C2. Unfortunately, this gives me a chance to attack that pawn. And it seems that it's difficult for White to save this uh, to save this game, right? After Rook E3. Let me see if I did. I look at something else here, like. Uh, if you defend it, I can just continue to enter with the king, right? With king king d4, um, like that, I, I, I guess. Somehow, white king is not well placed. It's funny that if you remove the pawns, it would be like Philidor defense, right? But since the pawns are on, it's still tricky for white to, to save themselves here. Uh, king a2, rook c3. King a2, rook c3. King a2, I think you can just push the pawn, right? There is no need to... Do anything else is there chess art all right so this is a little mystery and since you guys love these requisites uh this is your opportunity okay this is your opportunity to show me that you have actually understood this all right here we go you get only 40 seconds <laughs> not now 206 that was uh yeah what can i say a little collapse, but no problem. Titan Chess, first winner. Congratulations. Sarthak, your second place here. Great work. Alg, Kind King Sam, Skilled Saber. Sui Random. Tricky, tricky exercise. Something about restricting our opponent's plans, right? Like not letting them do what they would like to do. Goats, Tori Chess, GM, Gordon, Elephant, Chess Genius. You all got it. Congratulations. Adi Chess in Yugoslavian Berserker. Should you really put the king there? Well, we will we will talk about that, Adi Chess in Yugoslavian. Can I get pawn? Uh, no, be, uh, you could get, but uh, Titan Chess is was uh, faster. So I will stick to my convention and the person who gets it fastest uh, gets the right to carry out the move. So let's see if I can find Titan here somewhere. Uh, here is Titan. All right. Please go ahead, Titan. Aha. We should keep the Rook there. By the way, computers will often tell us that like Rook 7 is okay also. But for humans, uh, we should stick to, to the last rank, right? If we have a choice between these two moves, there is absolutely no reason to, to go one step uh, less. No, it's better. The more space for the Rook, the better. All right. Let's continue. So here comes the key move. This is a very difficult move to... To understand but by comparing the other options we can quickly conclude that we have to play that way right please go ahead uh, uh, where is uh, titan what happened titan you you fell asleep went for a cup of coffee all right i'll connect uh sarthak instead so okay sarthak you can take it from here King b2, exactly. And if I go e3, Sarthak, what will happen? Now we should harass black, no? Harass them before they get the king to d4. So I have to do something. Let's say I play rook here. Yeah, that's not making sense, right? Sarthak, exactly. We should just try to uh, put obstacles in, the, in that way, exactly. And again, I cannot defend the pawn properly. Right. Don't go this way. Somebody said this, but that must be wrong. I'm just guessing now that that must be wrong. You give me a chance to, to bring in my king. At least it gets more difficult. And I mean, I have a plan like if you go for, for that pawn, I think I could play something like, well, we have to think about this. We can probably play something like this. And if you take the pawn, I can give check and I win, right? Correct me if I missed something. But I think this is how it works here right so complex complex for white but uh, that's the uh, thin line that they have to walk here in order to make it draw king b2 don't say to me that this is easy don't say that this is easy i think it's very very difficult to opt for this move it, it goes against uh, all our intuition to play like that but it's the only way to uh, to save this game uh, so yeah what what else about this uh, about this so you can play something like king d4 here but now 
uh, it's possible to go for the pawn. And I think simply at this point, black is not going to progress here if, if we play king here, right? Is that so? Somehow we're, we're actually going for some kind of uh, fill it all defense here, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, is it winning also for, for black this? Uh, I don't think so. I should just wait here, I think. Uh, and it's not easy for white to progress, so for black to progress. In any case, this was very complex. Uh, we're talking about taking our chances here with black. By the way, some people were saying instead of playing e4, why can't I play king d5 straight away? And I think you can also. I think you can, but I can look exactly rook b8, e4, and king c3. This would be similar to what we just looked at. And again, it seems that white has chances of making a draw. But like I'm saying, uh, easy to say that it's a draw because Tokfi said so and so on. But when you're actually sitting there and playing, uh, it's a different story. All right. Uh, I had one more rook and game. Maybe we should, yeah, we, we should probably look at that one. And then I had a few opposite colored bishops in game. So let's take the rook and game. I think this is a very fascinating rook and game. Uh, they can be a little tiring now, the rook and games, but they are very practical because they appear a lot in practice, right? Yeah, this is a painstaking rook and game. And in this game, these are two strong players, two grandmasters from India who had this end game. Uh, again, same story. Objectively, it's a draw, but in practice, it's certainly not easy to uh, save this game. So, all right, let's start with a challenge for you guys. You'll have to tell me uh, why it's... Uh, I'll just quiz you for the key idea here, all right? Let's quiz you for the key idea. Let's see if you can get this right. Let's see. Pretty key idea, and white noticed it, and actually white won this game. They won this game because they used our key idea, all right? Um, that's it. All right. This is a difficult one, for sure. Uh, I get the point, uh, kind King Sam. If you play like that, I guess I have to play King e7, right? Uh, Gordon, guinea pig and goats, I'll give you a million checks there. All right. The same goes for 206 and Titan chess. Checks all over the place here. I don't think you have a good place for the king to hide, right? Uh, interesting move by Connor. Let's see if I get this right. You want to, if I take the pawn, you play king d5. And then I go rook g1. You go rook. Wow. I'm not sure. We will look at this together, all right? Very natural move by uh, Connor and Mecha Mortis and Owen and Princess Megan. Uh huh. Did anyone get close? Uh, no, nobody got close. Oh yeah, Skilled Saber. I'm very sorry for you, Skilled Saber. You're basically, you had the win in the pocket. Uh, Tactical Magician, the same goes for you. You two guys were closest here. What about my move? I don't understand. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand either. We will look at this, all right? Don't worry, we are here to learn. So, King D6 is winning on the spot. Requis. No, but I don't want to requis. We should first talk a little about the solutions that you provided. So I'll ask a Skilled Saber on this on this one. Please go ahead, Skilled Saber. You were extremely close. King C5. White's idea is simply to give up this pawn in order to help their central pawn. So let's check the the critical variation. Rook a3, so that we can give check. I think computers will also, again, they will accept rook b3, but that's silly in human eyes. Whenever you have a chance to use the edge of the board, you should, of course, use it. So here we go. So rook b3 is also k, chess out. Yeah, but human wise, okay, I can write it here. Whenever we can, whenever uh, seizing the edge is possible, uh, it makes sense to, to do so. In, in rook and games, right? So uh, half point, yeah, okay. You give, you get half point. So uh, let's do something here, uh, skilled saber. Let's do something. 
let's do something here. I'll revoke the move. Black plays at this point king e8. And we will have a surprise uh, quiz here. Aha, tactical magician and skill saber. You're the smartest ones, right? And everybody else fell in the devilish trap. <laughs> awesome Owen and Chester. Good thinking. Yeah, there is a saying in English, uh, they say not everything that glitters is gold, right? That's what they say. So, of course, the move King D6, it's extremely tempting to the human eye. We hit the rook and we threaten mate, but we exactly tactical magician. We have F6 here. So, funnily enough, black is actually okay here in this, in this position. Uh, yeah, we can later on. Uh, one day we will sacrifice for the pawn. Not now, of course, but later. And then we can uh, run with our pawn. So, a tactical magician, which is then the right uh, choice here with white. Well, if it's not one of them, it's the other one, right? Exactly. And at this point, it's funny, but now there is the concrete threat of check and d6 and d7. Let's say I play something like... Yeah, let's say I play something like uh, f6. Yeah, please go ahead, tactical d6 and yeah what can i play here rook there maybe and unfortunately i'm not in time here don't tell me you messed this up uh, tactical i think you're almost lost now careful now you're in trouble now you have to fight for a draw instead yeah don't worry don't worry you get a second chance here yeah exactly give the check first please now as you can see uh, now it's working very well uh, black uh, will have to sack the pawn, the rook for the pawn, but uh, white king is, is too close, right? So nice. Yeah, thanks, uh, tactical. So that's the point here. King c5, that's what we should play here. We have seen that if rook takes d5, we have rook a3. This is a very important variation to see. Of course, the grandmaster saw this when he played in this way. This move is very nice, king c6. I have seen it in some other endgame, so I remember this, uh, this pattern with, with f6 uh, sneaky defensive move anyway uh, we're in the same topic here it's not winning king c5 it's not winning it's just a good chance but black uh, sengupta noticed this and didn't take the pawn so i'm just telling you that this is the ideas that we have and they might not work all right you told me many other moves here so rook f3 was proposed if you play rook f3 i wonder if i should give you a bunch of checks first that's usually the right recipe, no, in these positions. I should probably give you a million checks, and then I should uh, defend the pawn. What if black does nothing? Yeah, we'll come to that. We'll come to that. So that's as for rook f3. d6 is very interesting. I understand the point. If rook takes, you were going to play king d5. I wonder if I could get away with f6 here. I know it's an ugly move, but I don't think it works, right? f6. Probably you win like this, you play rook here, you move over the rook like that, and and you win. Is that so? I think so. This is probably winning for, for white. So I like the looks of d6, but I know that it's wrong. <laughs> I just don't know why. So let's uh, think. Maybe we should play king e6 then with black, right? Maybe this is making sense. King e6. Can we play that? Or then you play rook d3. Tricky, tricky business here. Uh, go back, it works. It's f5. I see many moves here. Rook, rook takes d5. All right, king d5. Does this really work? I don't follow. Rook here, maybe. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that might work. That might work. I, I must say it looks a little scary, but uh, it's perhaps working. Yeah, they cannot progress here. White, is that so? King c6, or they can indeed progress. Yeah, this is the starting to look scary. No. Um, I wouldn't fancy being black in this endgame. Yeah, no, no, we should not play like this. So d6, very interesting try. Very interesting try. Uh, but there are some other moves that we can play here, right? Uh, this is like interesting move. Or is, is that silly? I was thinking of just playing king e6 next turn. Oh, you're saying that, Sartak. Yeah, maybe, maybe. This looks like a good move, at, at least from here, without using a computer or so on. If rook f3, we can go king e6 and we'll pick up the pawn. f6 just works after king d5. I don't follow Sui. Where do you play f6? f6 just works after king d5. I don't understand the comment. It does indeed work, f6 here? 
How can you make this work? I don't follow. You have noticed something that I didn't notice. King d8. All right. I'll put my rook on this side. Oh, rook h5. Okay. I, I'll, I'll go against my principles. I put my rook here and then instead. Okay. So rook takes e5 and I go king c6. Well, if you say so, but it, it seems that lost to me. G5. Okay. So if I go to the other side. I meant rook e1. N not here, I suppose. Yeah, this is losing, right? Rook e8, take, take, and king c7, or what am I missing? So I don't think that's a good idea, Sui. Uh, or, or please refute me if, I'm, if I miss something. But uh, this seems to be lost, no? Rook e8, and I play king c7. So my gut feeling is that this is the right move to... Yeah, to, to, to restrict white's king, right? And then we try to play king e6. Rook d3. Yeah, maybe, maybe. Now, of course, we must not go for the... Uh, oh, but that's a good point. Yeah, it got very tricky, no? It got very tricky. Wow. The king will go to d5. But can you progress after that, uh, uh, Mecha Mortis? I give you a check here and I wait for you a little, like that. Can you really progress here? Or, or maybe I should put my rook somewhere else, like... Like here, maybe, so that you can't play rook here. And whenever you try to improve your rook, I will give you a million checks. Right? Does that make sense? Or what do you think? We wait for them a little, right? We wait for them. Rook a3 says elephant. All right. What is your plan here, elephant? You can have the, the pawn, elephant. You can show us. How should white continue here? All right. Uh, I guess I should play this if I can. Okay. One more and then the king. Now the king for sure. Now let's bring in the king. I don't think you progress very well here, do you? Well, tricky, tricky endgame. Uh, well, we're little against the time, so let's... Uh, thanks anyway, elephant. Interesting variation. D6, certainly interesting. Uh... It should be a draw this endgame, if I remember correctly. But we should take our chances. King c5 was played in the game. Let's have a look at what happened after that. So Black understood that they should not take the pawn due to this nice little trick, King c6. So they played correctly in the game. Uh, waiting move here. They played simply... Let's see if I can find this now. Uh, patience, please, guys. Rookie one. Black st simply sticks to waiting policies. White played here, very, very smart move, rook c4. They noticed that if rook, yeah, d6 creates a weakness on e6, that's right. White noticed that if rook a1, uh, rook a3, sorry, black can start giving checks again. So they played this smart move. All right. Uh, anyone, what do you think black should play here? Yeah, no request on this one. Uh, yeah. Anyone, what should black play here? This is the key moment in the game. Should we take the pawn or should we do something else? Yeah, you're right, uh, Sarthak. Something like that, Sui, Rook F1. Exactly. We should wait. We should wait. Unfortunately, the Grandmaster, experienced Grandmaster, he took the pawn instead. He took the pawn. And now it's over. So here we go. Time for you guys to show what you have just learned. We actually already learned this lesson, right? We already learned the lesson, so... Uh, tactical magician showed us so now it's uh, your turn guys to find the whole sequence you will have to find a bunch of moves here uh, <laughs> many moves all right to make it more fun uh, well we will stop here i think like 10 moves so you get uh, one minute and 30 like 10 moves here almost 10 moves take your time don't send the moves don't send the moves take your time take your time think think please <laughs> Uh, Adi Chess, I think you fell in the trap, right? You remember that F6 move? I think that will save me. 206, you got it. Fantastic work by 206. Uh, Gordon, your second place. Great work. 
Yugoslavian Berserker, that's extremely close. That's basically winning also. So consider yourself a winner, Yugoslavian Berserker. The same goes for Sartak. Yeah, you were also very close. Uh, Inari, the Husky, also very close. Uh, so yeah, we have several winners basically here. If you got to move eight, like Titan Chess, uh, Mesa Mortis, Chess, or Connor, uh, that's uh, excellent. Aha. Uh, 206 was fastest. Then we had Gordon, GM, and Elephant Chess Genius. But uh, you remember, right? The chess, chessable classroom is a great place, but it will only allow me one, uh, one solution. Uh, so in random, don't you think it's more logical to bring the king a little closer? Uh, if you see what I mean. If you have a choice between approaching the king and not approaching the king, we should usually approach the king, right? All right. So please go ahead, uh, Gordon. You can you can take it from here. Long variation. Uh, how did white take home this game? Black must have forgotten about this option. Now it's basically the same thing that we already looked at. Black is currently a pawn up, just like in our first example today. But after this precise move, of course, Gordon knows that this move can be met by f6 and then the king can escape. Or I think also king f8 actually works and you can start doing this business if you like and you can ultimately sacrifice the pawn. So much stronger move, of course, king c6 so that we don't obstruct the pawn. I think black played at this point rook, uh, rook g1. Did they play that? Uh, hold on, guys. Let me just see if I can find the right. Uh, or I can, I can of course switch to the to the notation. Let's see if I find what happened in the game. I think they played rook g1 here, right? Yeah, rook g1. So please go ahead, uh, Gordon. Aha! The king now has to go to e7, so we win a tempo by giving check. Here we have a very important moment. Please don't play d7. No, if you don't want to end this game in a tragedy, rook e8, of course. So that black king's black king moves away. Uh, yeah, you're you're a winner, Sartak. You're a winner. It's about the king move in the end, right? I think. What did you play here, Sartak? Do you remember? Was it here on move eight? No, here I don't think you played anything else, right? Don't tell me you played d7 here. I don't think so. No, you probably played rook rook here, right? So yeah, please go ahead, uh, uh, Gordon. Now or never. Yeah, exactly. So at this point. If black just goes for the pawn, white's king is comparatively close. So we can just queen. And as you can see, uh, our king is, is close enough to, to walk, sorry, to walk home, right? It doesn't matter so much that black has two pawns as long as our king can get, get there soon. So in the game, they tried instead rook c1. So I think it's maybe here that some of you... Those of you who said King D6, I think um, you can consider yourself winners, but it's not the most logical move because I can go Rook D1. If you said King B6, I don't think it's too logical either because actually the closest the White King can get. Yeah, Chess will only lose one move, exactly. King, if you play like that, I'm not sure. I don't like this uh, Titan Chess. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right, but... I don't like it. I think your king should be on this side, not not like that. Um, or what do you say, Titan Chess? You can have the pawn, of course, Titan, if you want to play out this uh, this variation. Um, can you really win here? We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, take with the rook, of course, so that the king stays close. But my gut feeling is that you have the king in the wrong place. I know there is some plan like this. I don't know if you can. Can you get to that? Uh, I don't think so. G1 knight. <laughs> oh, that's going to happen here. Yeah, you're probably right. There is a knight of promotion. Yeah, yeah. Good point by... Who said that? 206. It wins. I calculated. Okay, that sounds uh, reassuring. So please go ahead, Titan Chess. Show us your first win here. I would say the king is in the wrong place here. But okay, I might be wrong. No, that's, that's not the right angle. If that's your best move, I think we're on the wrong track because you, this can never be correct. No, The rook should always hit the pawn in the back. So, wrong track. Yeah. Some people are saying, I understand what you're, what, what you're trying to say here. But it's not, it's not like that. I understand you're saying that in the end I have to 
a queen and knights. No, but that's not going. To, that's not even necessary here, right? Or am I missing something? That's not going to happen here. I can just safely queen a, a queen, right? So wrong track, wrong track. Uh, I don't know. Are you still there? Uh, who, who was Gordon? I think Gordon was showing this. So oh, you you stick to this Titan. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. My my silly mistake. Sorry. Even if, yeah, even if it's queens and knight, it's of course a draw. Yeah, because the knight is not lost. That only happens with the h1 knight, right? Uh, sorry, Titan. You wanted to continue here, or or are we? Do we agree that there is no uh, win for white? Okay. Titan gives it another try. Uh, I'll continue to run. Uh, please notice that he can't cut me off. Yeah, I like that move more, of course. But I don't think you can make it here. If you could get like this, th that that would work. But I don't see how that's going to happen. Uh, there is some idea like that. All right, time to run. Even without this pawn, it's it's an easy draw here, right? But uh, we can look at this, of course, if you if you're not convinced. King f6 works. King f6. Which king f6? Here. Oh, really? How does that work? Like that, and wait, and then bring in the king. No, it's not not, not working. Or what am I missing? Yeah, I don't think so. So back to Gordon. Yeah, we lost a little time here. I mean, we learned things also. But let's go back to to Gordon, who was showing the the solution here. So please go ahead, Gordon. How how do you continue here? We need to bring the, exactly. Bravo! I hope everybody understands. Geometrically, so you could say sometimes. What uh, seems to be wrong, uh, seems to be wrong geometrically, geomet geometrically, uh, can be right chess-wise, if you see what I mean. I'm not good with geometry, by the way. I, that was never my best uh, subject in school and so on. But I understand that here, even if it looks like the king is like moving away from the pawn, it's actually getting closer. I once had any game like this, by the way. I put it in my book. So... Uh, yeah, I think I, I know, know something about it. So please go ahead, uh, Gordon. Easy, no, easy now, because the king is getting closer. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, I'll do my best to, to confuse uh, Gordon here. I'm just playing the game, by the way. This is the game. This is the game. So we have an important endgame principle. King first, all right? A good occasion for king first. All the pressure is here on, on Gordon to find White's best move, of course. King e4, play the Grandmaster, uh, smart try, trying to shoulder White's king. But no thanks, we don't want to get shouldered, so what do we play? That's right, so the king must move away. And uh, yeah, they just picked up the pawn and this is how the game ended. The king is just there in time and so on. Uh, yeah, usually when you have to, to obstruct your own pawn, that's a bad sign. Had the king been on f2, it was a draw with king e1, right? So it's the tragedy of one tempo as, as always. Yeah, king e2, king h1, and this is how it ended. There is like a funny draw with a stalemate, right? But it won't happen here. So uh, yeah, that's it. All right, so back again. What did we look at here? We are talking about... Uh, trying to win this endgame, it's not won, but we should certainly give it a try. Best try, king c5. We had this sneaky idea of rook here and king c6. Black in the game noticed they didn't fall into the trap. But at this point, for some reason, they lost. Uh, yeah, they lost their mind. They lost their head here. They should have waited, like Sartak said, something like this, or maybe just keep it over there. It's not clear how white can progress. If the king goes comes closer, we can start giving checks. But in the game, they took the pawn. And then we had this very nice idea that Gordon showed us check and then the key move here, king c6. Uh, all right, guys. Yeah, it's so unnatural not to take the pawn. I think we, we can stop for today. Uh, I had this opposite call of bishops and games, uh, but I think we'll have to take them next time, right? So thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks and see you next time. Thanks, Chester Ojo, Chessable. USCS, Greg Shahadi, thanks. Bye-bye.